And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Well, your first drive of the first quarter, you get it down there, try to fire it in the end zone, and big-time deflation on that play. No doubt about it. They're moving and grooving and getting into position, and this is not the ending that they saw on this drive, is it? They had things going their way. So after the INT, it's Breeze. He's got time in the pocket. He dumps it down to Ingram. And down he'll go at the 25. Five yards on the pickup, and it'll make it second down. Nice job there, right, of just going through the progressions, finding the open man, even if it wasn't for a 25-yard game. Everything does not have to be spectacular. The mundane works pretty well in this league, as we just saw there. And the former Heisman winner, this is Mark Ingram. Still a couple yards short of the first as the three-yard gain brings up a third down. For the ball carrier there, Mark Ingram in his sixth season now with the Saints. Yet to have a 1,000-yard season, but any guy who wins the Heisman Trophy, you know the potential's always there. Yeah, but you're right, yet to get to 1,000. Had 769 last year in 12 games. Looks like a nickel set here defensively on third and two. Yeah, maybe expecting a throw. Breeze now to throw. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. Whenever I see an in route dropped, as we just saw on that play, I'm always thinking that in the back of their mind, they're worried about what's coming at them because they're going towards traffic on that route as opposed to being away from it and maybe having a little bit more space. Here's Beckham. Nice job bringing that one back. 14 on the return. And possession will switch. Hands first and 10. The Giants offense now gets ready to head back onto the field. And they had a nice little drive going last time. Threw the interception in the red zone. Costly. Bad enough to throw it anywhere, but that drives coaches insane when they're thinking about, hey, we got a shot at points already. We're already in a spot where you're thinking you've got three on the board for sure, and to come away with nothing, that's a really tough one for them to swallow. Yeah, will they make up for it? When Nick Fairley's on his game, he is your prototypical defensive tackle who can make disruptive plays. Great hands, really good quickness. Second down, offense behind the sticks here. Second and 13. They'll run again with Green. And he'll be brought down just shy of the 45. Call it a gain of five that time. They'll be left with a third down at about nine to go. And this defense looks for one more stop here on third after the run. It's a five-receiver set. Three to the left, two to the right. Throwing his Manning on third down. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. We know it's not an easy job to go out and catch passes when people are trying to tackle you and knock the ball away. But the bottom line is, that's a pass he's got to have and a pass he should have caught. On now is Brad Wing to kick it away for the Giants. Now this is fielded in the end zone. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Saints will get the football at their 20. one across the 30-yard line. 11 yards on the pickup, and that leads to a New Orleans first down. Well, how many times do we say in this game is speed kills, and it does it in so many different ways. In this case, you got a back who's quick and shifty, can make moves, make people miss, but also gets to and through a hole before it can close down. That's some of the benefits of that speed, not just outrunning people in the secondary. That led to a really nice game. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves them with a second and three. Some runs are blocked so well, you almost forget that someone has to carry the ball to gain the yardage. The leverage by the offensive line to create space up front, 
Really well done. They come up in an offset eye. And they'll go on the ground. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. They'll lose a yard, and it brings up third. The evaluation process in today's NFL does not take into account as much bulk as it does speed. And that's what we're seeing with the linebacker position. Those guys that can run, they can play at any spot because they can make plays on the opposite side of the line of scrimmage. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. An extra defensive back in the game now here for third and four. Now Breeze. And he's got his man in stride, complete. And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. And there's a nice completion to Kobe Fleener, and no one can be happier than Drew Brees. Yeah, he had Jimmy Graham for all those years, Ben Watson last year, and now coming south from Indianapolis, Fleener. And the offense lining up first and ten. They come out here in the eye. On first and ten, here's Breeze. It's caught left side by Cooks. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. It's a gain of nine yards. And it'll be second and about a yard to go for the first. Good throw, good catch, but I really like the route. The drag and being able to run away from defenders. Hard to stick with them for that long. Yeah, better against man than zone or... Better against man because now you're running away from someone and you're not running into a defensive player in another zone. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 40. Eight yards on the pick up there and it moves the sticks. Second and one and people want to run the football. This is where every back in the league is supposed to do exactly what we just saw there. Pick up the first down. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. A handoff as they run the counter play. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Throwing on second down. He's just going to dump this one off to his fullback out of the backfield. Holding offense. So a little grabbing there, but this time it goes against the offense for holding. Clock running under a minute to go in a scoreless first quarter. In the slot on the right is Graham. On second down, here's Breeze. And seeing nowhere to throw, he chucks this one away from harm. Incomplete. Now it's third down. Ninth play of the drive now on third and a country mile. Third and long, it's Breeze. Looking for his running back, and he's got it. And a nice little quick spin move before he's dropped. And a pretty good gain. That's certainly playing down in distance very well by the defense, isn't it? Take whatever you want underneath, by all means. This is going to hit the goal line and continue up. alongside Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon, and it's the Giants with a football here as we begin quarter number two as they take over following the punt with a first and ten. Now a first down run here. This is Vereen. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Now that's the type of play that'll fire up a defense, hold them to one yard on a first down run. It'll be interesting to see if the offense decides to press the run at all, or if they'll abandon it now after gaining only one on that play. Throwing is Manning. 
Finding time. A hit as he throws there, incomplete. He was looking for Odell Beckham that time. And it's third down. It's a tried and true formula, and I don't think it'll change for as long as we play football. If someone's trying to throw the ball and you can put pressure on them and make it tough, that's only going to help your defense. Yeah, he's since being hurried. He got rid of it before taking the hit, but incomplete. And defensively, it's a nickel formation here on third down and nine. Now Manning. He's got time. Look at the time. He's going to loft one. And got his man complete. And he's brought down after a good game. Now that play will end up on the highlights. You'll see it all over the place. But what you won't see, the offensive line that bought the extra time that allowed for the big completion downfield. Those guys made that play possible. On the run, here's Vereen. Looking for a seam, but finding none. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle, that's what we saw right there. Yeah, and that's what their job is. And really, a lot of the time, they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends, they're like in a sprinter stance. They're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play to hold him to no gain. And this is Shepard on the catch. 20, and he's taken down, but not before reaching the 10-yard line. They give him a gain of 38. Coaches really don't care from what position they get this, but run after the catch ability, rack ability, is often the difference between winning and losing and changing field position. Manning now on first down. This will be caught at about the six. Seven yards on the play, and that'll make it second and goal. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route, and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps, and cuts towards the middle of the field, and now what he's trying to do... And he takes it into the end zone for a giant TD. Shane Vereen, his first touchdown here of the new campaign. And the Giants have taken the lead. And Charles, he's able to dive in there in a short yardage situation. Just find a place to get to the end zone. Didn't matter where it was, but once he did, used his nose for the end zone and dove in. It's up, it's good, and the Giants have a 7-0 lead. Brown now to kick it away after the touchdown. This one fielded at the five. And he'll make it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Got to give credit where it's due. Really nice defense on that play. The pitch and catch was successful, but not any run after it. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Breeze to throw on second down. And he's just going to get rid of this thing. To no one here, he throws it away. And now it's third. Not too many things get to a quarterback of this magnitude, but I think it's safe to say that pressure can get to any quarterback. Now he's obviously a great franchise quarterback, but felt the pressure, threw it incomplete. And it looks like we've got a dime set here defensively. Six DBs in the game. Now Breeze on third down. Surveying the field. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. The man they call Snacks, Damon Harrison, in there to get him for a loss of nine, and that'll lead to fourth down. And we say it all the time, have to be able to get rid of the ball sooner than that. You have to help your offensive line out. They're going to protect you as best they can. And if you're getting three to five seconds to throw the ball, they're doing a really nice job. But when you hold it and give up a sack, you're really almost discrediting their work. The Giants offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that. They had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? 
I would think that they would because if they were confident enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went. No adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but a guy carrying the ball. He was the finisher. A really nice run. Three receivers to the left, one to the right. They fake the handoff. Now Manning. And that one goes incomplete. He's maybe lucky it wasn't a fumble as he got hit as he threw it. The good signal callers would never go back in the huddle and play the blame game because they need those guys to protect him. But on that last one, his offensive line, they lost their leverage very quickly, and that's why they were able to get to him and hit him as he tried to throw the football and force an incompletion. Manning to throw on third and one. And he's going to drop this off to his fullback. He only got a yard, but that was enough to do the job. I feel like Eli Manning has just gone from downfield bomber to a guy who can complete everything. He can hit him underneath now. Yeah, can't we just saw that there with that pass completion. The maturity of a veteran taken with the defense will give him. smaller defender. Yeah, because those DBs like you, they want the interception. They're not as worried about the running play, right? <laughs> not at all. And I, I, used to, I, I still remember being in school and one of my offensive line teammates used to say, boy, I'd love to come downfield and hit you little people. <laughs> Good run there. Tough day, tough sledding right there, and it's been that way the entire game. Not a whole lot of room to ramble for him. Yeah, you're right. It's been that way all afternoon. Didn't get a whole lot better there. now out of the gun and a solid run down inside the 30 give him eight yards there still a few inches to go though as it'll be third down at about the length of the football this drive is turning into an extended one and and the guy carrying the ball he's becoming more like a body blows guy every carry is putting some damage on the defense so after a while I'm not too sure how many guys are going to want to run up and tackle him. It's a loss of a full three yards, and it brings up fourth down. So third and inches, trying to pick it up up the middle. He had nowhere to go tackle for a loss. And you know how we talk about double A-gap pressure, meaning linebackers going in the gap between the center and the guard on either side? Well, it's not always to get to the passer. Sometimes you do that to prevent a running play. Worked pretty well in that situation. And the 13-year man puts it through, and the lead moves to 10 zip. A little bit of a lower trajectory there on the deep kick, and it worked. Had to do it because he had to drive it out low because of the length of the kick. Able to do that, got it above the defense, and over the post. This will be fielded at the 8. And they'll have good starting field position as he's up just shy of the 40. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. And three and out on the last drive. No points on the scoreboard. A little soul-searching now? I would say so. And they need to help out their defense a little bit. They've had to be on the yeah, field a lot position. more than normal. Put them in some tough spots. But what's the old adage? When you get another chance, it gives you a better chance to do it right. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 37-yard line. That's going to go as a loss of two. And it'll be second down. And they're going to speed things up here. Now Breeze throwing on second down. It's complete. Flaner right side. 
A gain of four on the play, and they're going to face a third down. And there's another completion to the tight end. And let's face it, it is hard to overthrow a six foot six inch target. It is indeed. Quarterbacks like their speed guys. They like that huge six six target that they've got in him. They really do. And it, it reminds me of what one great tight end told me once. He told his quarterback, just make sure you throw it up there. You know, kind of like put up in the top shelf where the kids can't get it. From the gun on third down, Breeze. It's caught left side by Cooks. And now the Giants will stop play as they take a timeout defensively. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. Yeah, this one's going toward the sideline. They'll try to play keep away from Beckham. This one angles out of bounds in a good spot in the coffin corner. And they're going to mark this out of the five-yard line. And here comes the Giants offense back out onto the field. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're, they're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Run what you do best. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. And the best way to do it, touchdowns they ran that one well and not only did they pick up a nice chunk of yardage on the screen they sent a message to the defense rush the passer all you want but you better be careful we can hit you going back the other direction on first down manning out on the right this is cruz and he'll be out of bounds right at the 35 they give him 15 more and it's another first down in recent years, the slot receivers really gained stature in the NFL because they could do so many things. Yes, they can line up wide like your normal wide receiver, but to have that kind of courage and toughness to run routes in the middle of the field and become dependable targets for their quarterbacks and move the sticks, those guys are worth their weight in gold. And he'll be out of bounds up near midfield at the 49. It's a gain of 14 there, and it's first down New York. As if he didn't have enough to think about, on that route, the comeback route, coming back to the football and catching it, decided to make sure he toe-tapped and kept himself in bounds. And that was spectacular, but on the comeback route, maybe a little easier to deal with the sideline since you, you've got better vision of it? I think that's a great point because you should know exactly. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. So we're back in the offense getting set following the call of that timeout. and 10. Here's Manning. To Shepard complete over the middle. And he's brought down. 17 yards on the pickup there. The drive will continue. It's a first down. And with that completion, he's now north of 200 yards here in the first half. Boy, a tough start for the secondary defensively. It is, and it's got to put a dent in their confidence. And, you know, you always want to keep that up and feel like you can always bounce back after plays. But with the kind of numbers he's putting up here, it's starting to wear on them a little bit, I think. So they're looking at each other and trying to figure out what defense will work. And now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. And with halftime on the horizon, they'll be out of timeouts from here forward. So second down, three yards to go now. Manning to throw once more. And he's got his tight end, Donnell. It's a Giants touchdown. Larry Donnell as the first half is winding down. And the Giants are able to grow their lead. I heard a coach talk about those late-in-the-half scores, especially ones that give your team a pretty decent cushion. He said those could be the ones that could finish off a squad if you let them. Yeah, they've got the cushion. This half has been theirs. Brown now to kick it away after the touchdown. This will be fielded at the eight. And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30 to the 33-yard line. Oh, 
And with time running short here, they'll simply take a knee, and that should do it for half number one. So we reach halftime, and what's been... Okay, well, so much for the halftime report here. Can't, guy can't even finish his Snickers. We're going to get right to the third quarter. Let me spit this out. That's fielded in the end zone. And this will be a touchback, and as we saw in week one, the new rule, this one coming out to the 25-yard line. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage, look defensively. They come out here in the eye. And the third quarter starts with a run by Ingram. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Partner, you know I love to point out when teams break tendency and do something a little bit different from the norm. But when you run the ball in the first play of the drive, that's not a tendency breaker at all. That's just trying to establish yourself as you move forward. On second down, here's Breeze. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. If you run an out route, it's likely you end up near the sideline. And what did we just see there? The toe tap. You got it. Right. The benefits of practice. Toe tapping, foot dragging, picking it up, and making sure it was a catch. They come up in an offset eye. Breeze, now Breeze, lost the football. And the Giants have it. It's picked up. Look at this. Middle of the field. A breakaway. And this is taken into the end zone. A fumble recovery and a Giants touchdown. They give some kudos to the defensive coordinator, I think, here. They bring the blitz, they dial it up, and it turns into six points for them. It's so nice to hear you actually give kudos to the defense. It is so nice to such an offensive guy like that. I love it. He dialed things up, and boy, a big play resulted for his guys. Well, you like the credit to the defense there, right, my friend? Yeah, you do, do I ever. And the lead is now 24. So here's the kickoff now as he'll get it again following that fumble return for a score. Fielded about a yard deep. And the decision to bring it out, a good one, as he's up a yard or two shy of the 30. Trying to get the ground game going with Ingram. And he'll take this up near the 35, maybe the 34. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. And once again, leverage wins. The offensive line, lower than the defensive front. They moved him and got some good space for the guy carrying the ball. Now Breeze. He's got time in the pocket. And boy, that one drops incomplete. But if he was hit a fraction sooner, it may have been a fumble. And right now, I take my rudimentary kindergarten skills and draw where the tackle box would be because that was close. I thought he was in the tackle box. He has to be very careful where he gets rid of the football from that spot. Yeah, they say there was a receiver in the area, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's always a receiver in the area. Shotgun now for Breeze. Over the middle, it's Thomas. And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. And fits the exact right word. Over the middle, there's almost always traffic, so anytime you're a receiver in that area, you're not just focused on catching the football. You're wondering where the collision's going to come from, right? Because there's almost always someone there able to concentrate, catch it, and even added a little extra to the end with a short run. And he's going to bowl his way forward to the 48. So we've got a second and five. They come up in an empty set. Four wide receivers, one tight end. Throwing now is Breeze. It's caught outright by Graham. Give him 12 yards on that one. It earns him a fresh set of downs. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. Right, 
They come up with one back. That's Ingram. On first and ten, here's Breeze. Caught right side at Sneed. It'll be a two-yard gain, and it'll be a second down. The goal of a wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen? Did not let him get downfield. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Breeze to throw on second down. And that's caught. Did he stay in bounds, though? He did not. Ruled incomplete. That was a nice catch, but unable to stay in bounds. And remember, it wasn't a wide receiver who works on that all the time. I was going to say, he, he likes to get the ball handed to him. Now, don't get me wrong. He's part of the passing game as well, but maybe a little out of his comfort zone there. Yeah, he might want to have a few words to say to us about that later, but I am still going with you on that one. Wide receivers work on a little bit more. Play clock down to five, and they're going to burn a timeout. It's just their first, so two remaining as they burn one here in this third quarter. Seventh play of the drive, fourth coming on third and eight. Now Breeze on third down. Over the middle, open is Thomas. And he gets it down to the 32. Give him six on the play, and that's going to bring up a fourth down. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping him from a first down. Now stopped him in his tracks. Well, I guess they figure they got to start taking some chances. Here's a big one in this third quarter as he'll go for it on fourth down. Breeze now. It's complete to Flander. Give him eight on the play. And on fourth down, they're able to convert and move the sticks. Well, the field goal attempt was well in hand. They had that, but they decided to go for it anyway. Extreme confidence, it looks like. Yeah, but I bet the defense is going to remember this one, right? They kind of rubbed their nose in it. This is Ingram on first and ten. And he's going to be hemmed in and brought down right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there. Second down. No gain on that run. And while this team is down, they're not out of it by any stretch of the imagination. Maybe you just have to think about different style of running in order to get this guy going. On second down, here's Breeze. It's complete. Flaner, right side. And they'll bring him down at the 18-yard line. Six yards on the pickup, and that'll lead here to a third down. Partner, it's a lot of fun watching the NFL now, isn't it? Because when the big fella runs routes, it used to be when we were kids, he'd run about three different routes, and that was it. Now he can run anything and catch the balls we just saw there. And that is incomplete. Kobe Flaner, the tight end, is intended target. And fourth down coming up. I'm not sure we could spot any tendency here on this third down. They could have run it or passed it. Either one was available. They chose to try and get it through the air, but they run successful. Oh, that is a complete shank. It's no good. Off to the right, and this score will stay right where it is. Mm. It looked good when it left his foot, but he kind of sliced it a little bit, and he winds up missing it wide right. They'll start out with a run by Vereen. Try to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. So this is the second consecutive week as you look at the numbers that he just doesn't seem to have the same pop as we normally see him with. Is there an injury we don't know about? That's what I'm wondering. Because that's a legitimate question right now. We're used to speed, power all coming together. And what I've always loved about him is his vision. You know, last week he didn't have that as well. Always thought he was picking the wrong hole to try and run through. And his blockers, they seem to be getting him to the right place, but he picked the wrong spot. We're seeing some of that again this week. Can they snap it together? Can they get back in sync? Because normally we see them go together very, very well. Now Manning on the bootleg. And he's hit and taken down. Eli sacked. It's the Saints' new acquisition from the Rams. 
Rams, Nick Fairley, in there to drop him with his first sack of 2016. Well, they go play fake. The problem is nobody was faked out. <laughs> and when no one's faked out, what's the end result? Quarterback gets hit. <laughs> he gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. And it's taken in at the nine. Officially, that'll be a 63-yard punt. Well done. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. to him right up the gut and he'll lose yardage on this one back to the 13. It's a loss of four there bringing up second down. So Olivier Vernon nice tackle for loss. He had 18 of those last year for Miami. And he really emerged in a game against Tennessee last year. Absolutely unstoppable. Almost couldn't be blocked. Throwing on second down. And he's got it over the middle. Fleener. It'll be a three-yard gain. And it'll be third and ten. So the second consecutive week here that he has been just a minor part of this offense. What's going on? I think part of that is that defenses now view the tight end position as a major part of offenses. So they game plan for them. More double coverage. Sometimes they take a really good cover, cover player and put him on the tight end as opposed to other positions. Because in the past, the tight end was really just guarded by safeties. And nowadays, it could be a safety, a corner, linebacker. could be any one of those guys and maybe more than one of those guys to try and take him out of the game. He's struggling for the second consecutive week. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. On first and ten, here's Breeze. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. He got 18 yards out of that one, and it gets him a new set of downs. Back now here at MetLife Stadium. A lot of happy faces in the crowd at this point as their guys have a big lead here to start quarter number four. Throwing on first down is Breeze. He's going to leave this for his running back. It's complete. Nothing on that one. It'll be second down. And no doubt they are waiting for him to break out of this little funky as it's carried over from last game into this one. And now we've got to find out who's going to step forward to help him. All right, where will they lean in order to get him through these struggles? Do they go with the offensive line? Maybe try and run the ball a little bit more? Go to a shorter passing game, get the ball out of his hands quicker, let other guys do the work? They've got to figure out something because normally he's carrying them. In this case, they've got to find a way to carry him. So incomplete on second down. Now they'll look to convert here on third. Now Breeze on third down. Finding time. Great protection. And he can't get away from the pressure the Giants get there. Jonathan Hankins. He's the one that gets him down. It'll be a loss of five, and it'll bring up fourth down. Well, they went with the nickel. They throw in an extra defensive back. Coverage was very good. Yeah, it was exactly as you would expect. A passing down. You bring in the nickel package. Just as you described, the coverage was excellent and allowed one of their linemen to end up getting to the quarterback. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. And problems spreading to the punt team now. This one goes all the way into the end zone on the fly, so that'll come back to the 20. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, 
That'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. Second down and four. They stick on the ground. Again, it's Marine. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. It'll go as a gain of six that time, and it moves the chains as well. So many teams want the three. situation nowadays but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation that's almost a tendency breaker and a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground they'll run it's Vereen and he'll be limited to a short gain up to about the 34 yard line two yards on the carry there it'll be second down that's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held them to a gain of two. And that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. Here's Moraine. And he'll work this one up to about the 38. Four yards on the pickup there as it'll leave him with a third and about four more for a first. We always like to talk about defense in terms of levels. First level defensive line, second level linebackers, third level defensive backs. On that run, that was what we call a first level run and it was stopped by a second level player. And on the ground they go with a running back. And he's going to have a first down as he's brought down at the 44 yard line. On third down, that's a good job of situational football and understanding where the first down marker was and getting there. And they'll go with a ground attack here. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at him turn. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. And that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out-leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. They'll run it now out of the gun. And they'll stop him right on the midfield stripe. It'll only be a gain of a yard, and it sets up a third down and four now. So many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things, but the defensive guys... Hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blow. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he is going to lose yardage here. That'll make it fourth down after a loss of one. We talk all the time about how important it is to have leverage and blocking. It's also a big part of policing up gaps. Did you move someone out of the A gap? Did you move them out of the B gap in order to create space for your guy to run? In this case, all those gaps were shut down. Yeah, the movement was defensive, and they got him for a loss. It'll be 37 yards there on the punt, and the Saints will take over with a first down and 10. of a full three yards and now it's second down and that was well defended and as a cornerback what you're taught when you see a wide receiver screen either you get underneath the play before the blocking forms or you're gonna have to fight your way through it by getting through some blocking that was a really nice play there throwing now is breeze he goes underneath to Ingram, and they're able to bring him down at the 20. It's a four-yard pickup, and all of a sudden here, it's third down. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware, a ball may come your way. And five in the secondary now for the Giants on third down. Now Breeze. He's got time. He's going to let it fly. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. So it's Saints football as we get you reset. They come up on a fourth down situation with things not looking particularly rosy. His first punt, 48 yards. This one looks equally as good. Beckham, the return. Look at the spin. Balance. So possession goes over here on the punt. And it'll be giant football first and ten. Right. 
They'll give it to him right up the gut. They had a good swarm to the football defensively as they get him down at about the 40. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. The best defensive linemen, they play with great leverage so they can get low and not get bowled over by offensive linemen. They have excellent hands. They can throw people off on a play. We just saw a great example of a really good run stop by a guy playing the defensive tackle position. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he will be brought down at about the 43 that time. Four yards on the pickup there as it'll leave him with a third and about four more for a first. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it, thank you. Now a handoff here to his running back. And a minimal gain here as he's up to about... Yeah, the Saints signal for another timeout. That'll be their second, so one more chance to stop the clock here. And we'll be back. Here's Brad Wing now. He's been terrific so far. And this is a beauty as that ball is going to angle out at the six-yard line. And not great starting field position here for the offense. They'll run with Ingram here to begin the drive. And he's brought down. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. So the offense takes the timeout, and they are back out and ready to rock. So it'll be first down here after the run. They come up with one back. That's Ingram. And he'll get it up the middle. And he stopped immediately there. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. So Charles...